some special, uh, special treats for these last few days as we're getting ready for the Passover holiday. So we're continuing in some of the prophecies that are going to be happening right before Mashiach comes. And I want you to tell me if you believe that these things are all happening before our very eyes. We spoke a little bit about there's going to be a flourishing, a blossoming of the land of Israel and all of its fruits. I want to go on to the next prophecy. The verse says in Zechariah, in English that's Zechariah, for before those days people had no earnings. This is speaking about the prophecies of the times to come, that there's going to be problems. Remember we said that people won't be able to find work, they won't be able to find jobs, because AI is going to take over everything. Pandemic. Pandemic. The, the rapid inflation. So, oh, the inflation, we're going to get to that today. It's like all the banks just collapsed in the US. That's right. There are all sorts of interesting things happening. That's very, very correct. Specifically, we also mentioned that people are going to have a hard time selling their services. Somebody showed me today something that you could put in any description and, exact, and exactly according to the description that you want, it will produce the most unbelievable graphic image. So somebody put in the description of a glorious image of a man looking at the Kotel wall with, with hope of days to come and a sun that's setting in the distance. Oh, yeah. And it's like gorgeous, this view, perfect. So in one second I looked at this friend, I said, Basically, most graphic artists, that's it. That's insane. People won't be able to sell themselves. They won't, they won't be marketable because so much of the AI is taking the jobs. And therefore, you have to be smart in this world. You have to be very, very smart in this world Learn a trade. right now. A trade, become a developer of AI. <laughs> Can't beat them, join them. <laughs> <laughs> In that area, yeah, you have to work with the AI. That's very important. I believe that there's a lot of future with it. Also, you have to be able to work with people, with human beings, because that's something the AI, it's never going to be made of the soul. We explained that last time. It's just a high powered computer that has certain intuition we call it, but it's not deep soul intuition. It could put together all those descriptions and create the most amazing image based on all the things that a person's ever looked at on the web for that image and kind of gave it to you. That's very impressive. But as far as understanding the needs of the soul in real time, that you need to be a human being. So the more you invest in being a human being, there will be a future for human beings. So look at the next prophecy. There were no earnings from animals. Also animals weren't able to have earnings, meaning you couldn't even sell that your animal would have what to do. What? That there wouldn't even be need for the animals anymore. Right. And now look at this. We're going to talk about this part today. Those who travel back and forth had no peace because of the enemy. Those who traveled back and forth had no peace because of the enemy. Okay, what is that talking about? So says the Gemara, My la laba ein shalom minatsa. What does this mean? Those who are traveling back and forth, these people that are traveling, why won't they have any peace? What, what is going on here? So, so Rav says, this is speaking about Tamidei Chachamim. This is speaking about Torah sages. Shekos of Behem Shalom, that says about Torah sages, that one of the things that we know that 
Torah brings to the world is peace. That those who are purveyors of Torah bring peace to the world. Because Torah is always here to bring a peaceful solution. When a person is great in Torah, he has peace himself. He feels at peace. So much of the world that's so anxious all the time is because they're missing Torah. One of the greatest ways to cure anxiety is to learn Torah. I'm not giving medical advice. I'm giving Torah advice. Is to make sure that you add more Torah into your diet to cure any of the lack of peace. Torah is also here to bring peace between people. If a person has, has to go to Beisden, has to go to court because one person thinks that uh, he's owed money, the other person says, I'm owed money. So Torah can create the peaceful resolution. Torah creates peace between nations. Torah is here for peace. There'll be great peace for the ones that love your Torah. However, there won't be peace. In the days right before Mashiach comes, Ein Sholem. Why won't there be peace? Mipnei Tsar. There's going to be so much trouble in the world that even the Torah scholars are going to find that there's challenge. Sadly, we see certain things that what otherwise would usually have peace between different groups, sometimes you see that there's challenges, even amongst some of the scholars. Scribes are having a hard time concentrating. There's also that. There's also the individual piece. That's another one of the explanations. The individual piece of the scholars, of the Tamid Chacham, will itself be more challenging which in the past, it would have been much easier for them to sit and learn. They have unique Yetzirahs in the end of days. Okay? So that's what it means. There's no peace, even for those that generally have peace. Now look what Shmuel says. Says Shmuel, there won't be peace, why not? There won't be peace because there's going to be a point that all of the prices of items are all going to become the same. The price of items are going to become so expensive that it's all going to be the same. Now what does it mean that it's all going to be the same? You're not going to have enough for it. So you're not going to have enough. But why is it all the same? So what's the first part? Those that are going out and those that are coming in, which is travel. Crossing borders, which means transportation lines. So means <coughs> shipping and the ability to have free rain, free, uh, a free market where, where products can move to and from. What usually costs more? Products that are from local or products that are from afar? More is, is, you want to import something, it costs more money. It's from far away. You want to have something local, does it cost a lot of money? Less. Ideally, you know, generally we say less because it's, it's being grown right here. You don't have to pay for all the transportation costs. Say the Mepharshim, very fascinating. In the end of days, Ein l'yoytziv there's not going to be a yoytze laba. There's not going to be an ability for things to move around. And therefore, even the things that would have been more cheap, because they grow close, you would think should stay cheap, but they're going to be ex as expensive as the things that are from afar, which is interesting. Now, because things aren't moving in a normal way, now, I'm not sure if you know, there's an interesting concept that's been presented, which is to have something called a 15-minute city or a smart city, which is that everything is found within, essentially, a local 15 minutes. Now, there's something very nice to that because we're talking about, we're talking about uh, buy local. One of the values that I grew up with is I was blessed. I would always go to farmer's markets growing up from the time I was a little kid. My father, we would always go to the local farmer's markets, get our wild blueberries, get our, you know, local maple syrup. 
get uh, one of the things that we really liked was uh, in basil season, huge bushel, bushels of basil, fresh basil from the farmers. There's almost few things in the world as intoxicating as a car full of basil, okay? Everyone get your minds out of the gutters. There's no hot boxing. We don't condone that. But to hot box your car with basil, bushels of basil, is very healthy. It's extremely healthy. So we grew up, my brother always had a nice line that, that he, he always would say, I like shaking hands. My brother is a, is a very fine chef. He, he would always say, I like the idea that I could shake hands with the farmer that grew the carrots, pick them that morning, and that evening I'm putting them in the soup for my customers. And I shook his hand, you know, like, you know. Farmers still a little bit like, you know, earth on the hands, shake their hand. It's very nice, right? Local, buy local. It's very, very nice. So the idea of having a 15-minute city and keeping things local is very, very good. That being said, there is a value also that things can move around. There's something nice about that to be able, not everything is local. There's certain medicines that you, that you're right. Hashem designed it that many of the medicines you need are local. But oftentimes you need things, medicines from other places because the world has become so, uh, globalized. Some so globalized that we have a lot of different diseases and different things that we never had otherwise. So we need certain medicines from other places. There's certain herbs that are very healthy, there's certain superfoods that are very, very good. So you know what it says, in the end of days, there's going to be problems shipping things around. Things are going to have to stay uh, super localized. But the, the strange thing is, you would have thought, if it's, if it's saying super localized, then it's all going to be cheap. Oh, so that's the problem. Once you can't get anything else in, so even the things inside that would have been cheap are going to be expensive, like the things that are outside that normally when they come from afar, they're, they're going to be uh, expensive. So that's what it means. All the sha'arim are going to be the same. It's all going to get expensive, which is very, uh, very telling of what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. It could also be that there's just not as much supply. Oh, oh, wait, wait till the next thing. Oh, we don't have time for it. Let me begin it, because it's just, it's so good. Amr Rabbi Chanina, Ein ben David Ba, and she is bakish dag la chayla. Okay. Ben David is only going to come, which is Mashiach, when people who are not feeling well start asking for fish. Veloyim motze. And they're not able to get it. What does that mean? And brings the Pasik, we'll quote it, Mirza Shem will talk about it tomorrow. The Ben Ishchai points out that what does somebody who's not feeling well really want? He usually wants meat. To feel better. To feel better, to give him strength. <clears throat> meat is generally good quality meat, some good stuff. We'll give him a koyach. He wants that, but it's not available. Why is it not available? Because no either there's no cows anymore. Or, the or, or that cows are creating problems for the, uh, for the ecosystem the environmentalists, and, so they just and, and, and they're creating too much carbon. Or, or you have to eat bugs now, which by the way, the Jew is never going to be able to eat bugs. <laughs> which is, that, the Torah says you can't have bugs. So even if they're going to say that that's the right thing to do, we're always going to tell the world that I'm sorry, but the Torah says you're not allowed to eat bugs, and the Torah is eternal, and the Torah is God's word. So, we'll be eating vegetables. So, well, having vegetables. So, the sick person who normally would not want to have, would normally want to have meat, but it's not available. Meat is becoming more scarce, by the way, mm -hmm. as you're, I'm sure, noticing, and the prices are going up. He's going to say, I want to have fish, which generally. Is fish more abundant than meat? Yeah. Just go into the ocean. There's a lot of fish. Even the fish is not going to be available. Because there's going to be overfishing. Whatever, whatever is going to cause it, there's going to be not even fish available. So even something that the person who's not feeling well, that normally he wants meat, but that's not available. So he's going to be asking for, at least give me some fish, but not even that is available. That's the days 
that we're getting, that, that are seemingly happening right now. We're going to go more into this prophecy. This means much more uh, than meets the eye. And we should be zoich mamish. All of the challenges of humanity should end once and for all. And we should see the great salvation of the world in Mashiach Tzidkein B'mherevi Amenu Amen. Shavua Tov. Have a wonderful week, my friends. That's crazy. Look at what's happening. Supply chain.